This video shows you how to install Think or Swim natively on Apple M1 computers. TD Ameritrade has not put out a native Apple Silicon version of Think or Swim for Apple's M1 computers, so their Mac OS kit runs through Rosetta 2. Performance on Rosetta 2 may be poor for you if you run a complex Think or Swim environment and you may be looking for better performance. Think or Swim is a Java based program and the Mac OS kit ships with a private version of Intel x86 Java and you can't get it to use the Apple Silicon Java by just installing it. Instead, you can download the Java only version of Thinkorswim from TD Ameritrade to run with Apple Silicon Java to get native performance. There are two files in the Thinkorswim kit that need to be replaced with newer versions for this to work and this is a bit of a nuisance as newer versions of Thinkorswim have to be replaced with every version update of, of Think or Swim. There are six steps involved in setting up Think or Swim to run natively on Apple Silicon. The links will be listed below the video. The first step is to download and install Azul Java 11 LTS Mac OS ARM 64-bit V8. Go to the Azul download page and scroll down to Java 11 LTS. Then scroll down to Mac OS ARM v64 bit V8 JDK and click on the DMG link. Then open the pack, or sorry, open the file once it downloads. Then double click on the package. Step 2 is to download and unpack the Think or Swim Java installation. Go to the Think or Swim download page and scroll down to the section at the bottom titled All Other Users. Normally you'd install using this link, but this kit is for Intel Max. So we want this one. So this downloads a zip file and then puts it in this directory. Just uh, a note that um, I use Firefox and Firefox will put it in the downloads directory so that's where it should be. The assumption uh, for this video is that uh, the thinkorswim directory will be in the download subdirectory. The third step is to download the jar files. The reason we need to download these files is that the thinkorswim kit ships with old jar files that don't support the M1. So we're going to download these off of GitHub and later move them into the Thinkorswim directory. So we click on the first link 
and hit the download button and then download the file. Then click on the second link, download the file, and save it. And if we look at our downloads directory, we can see those two files have been downloaded. The fourth step is to manually install Thinkorswim, and this portion creates the use of GUI directory. This part of the video is a bit different from the original video because Ameritrade apparently changed the installation procedure. So we need to run launcher.jar three times instead of one time as before. So open a terminal window. And we'll go to our thinkorswim directory, and we'll just take a quick look around. Some people have mentioned <coughs> that they can't do the CD downloads thinkorswim, and if you have that problem, There may be an issue with the way the permissions are set up in the Thinkorswim directory. And uh, you may, to, may need to do something like setting it um, to provide per permissions uh, for read, write, execute for all users. Um, Some people have also reported that they're not able to run the launcher.jar file. And um, I originally had that problem with my new MacBook Pro, but I was able to fix it by doing a uh, chmod 777 launcher.jar. So you may need to do that. Um, after I did it the first time, um, I didn't need to do it afterwards, so I'm not exactly sure. It's possible that um, the at signs where there are additional attributes or the plus sign, which you sometimes see on an LS minus RTL, indicates ACLs. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to reproduce it, but I have run into that and I was able to fix it with the chmod commands. So now that we're here, um, we can do our chmod, oops, our sudo command. And we get an error back immediately. So we'll do it again, and now we see the installing updates window, and then that dies. And then we'll do it again, and we'll just create another terminal window. And we'll see the user GUI directory. So we can kill this now and proceed with the step five. Step five is to copy the jar files. So we take this command. And execute it. So now we're in the user GUI directory. Uh, let's check the directory. <coughs> the directory is 
1970.1.5 for us, but it might be different for you. So next we type this command. But we have to go put in that number that we had in the previous command. And next we do this other command. And that's it for this step. The last step is to try running it. So we'll go back to the thinkorswim directory. Then try our first run. And it crashes. Uh, well, it reports an error message, brings up a window, and then crashes. So we try running it the second time. And we're up and running. So just enter your username and password, and you're ready to go. Please let me know in the comments if you have any problems with this video. This is my first instructional video, so uh, may not be the most professional job, but it might be helpful. Thank you. I just remembered that uh, there's a little material in an addendum to start. Think or swim in the future, follow the directions in step six, though you only have to run it once. If the startup fails again, then it's likely that Ameritrade created a new user GUI version subdirectory and that you will have to execute step five over again to copy the jar files into that new subdirectory. Ameritrade will generally create a higher version number. So that's the one to look at, as the existing one um, will already have the changes you made originally. I think that they generally only store two versions at most in the user GUI directory. Again, thank you for watching.